welcome to the tribe table. Thank you for having me. We're excited that you're here. Yeah, you so you are flying around because you're doing something, you're promoting something right now. Yes, I'm, I'm promoting uh, our film, a uh, music documentary called When They Awake. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been on the road with it for over a year now. It's mm -hmm. about a year and a month. Uh, this is so quasi our last festival. Wow. Uh, we're about to go to broadcast in September, October, and uh, so this is kind of the the last few strikes, which is good yeah. because we are exhausted. Yeah, we've done over fifty festivals in the last year. At the same time, it's that's it's like also, one a week. Yeah, that's. I mean, on average, average. yeah. I mean, we have three this if week, you were right? able to average, right? Yeah. <laughs> Instead well, of there's more two like of three. Us, so we split yeah. it, okay, but, but it's still good. really exhausting. At yeah. the same time, it's also a blast, as you know. Yeah. So yeah, uh, it's kind of bittersweet sweet that we're wrapping up and, and you know being yeah. done with it yeah. but really good we've done what we needed to do with this documentary it's a, a, an important film good. about uh, a new movement of indigenous musicians all across North America we're focusing mostly in Canada but some are household names here in, in the US as well oh. and uh, like Buffy St. Marie you know good. if you talk about female civil rights activists yes. she's the godmother of everyone in our film pretty much that's amazing. Um, and uh, it's, it's an important story. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, I say a new movement, I should correct that. It's not a new movement. Our attention span is new. Uh, people have been yes. talking about these issues ever since yes. Buffy was 20 years old. Yes, exactly. It's just that we were not paying attention, and we are now. Our That's world is changing. Right? amazing. Good. So just talking a little bit about Circuit and the, the life of the film, and then I definitely want to go into the film mm -hmm. and the topic and a lot of the other things that you're talking about. Um, so a lot of people are coming here with the Bentonville Film Festival being their first uh, on a circuit or mm -hmm. somewhere in the middle, um, and this is toward the end for you. So you get to have you get to compare a lot of experiences, right. and we're not going to ask you to compare film festivals because that would be terrible PR. But um, so tell us why Film Bentonville Film Festival. If you are doing fifty, how did it make that make that cut, and why? Um, well, one of the things that. Uh, that you do as a producer is you look at what the portfolio of festivals available to you mm -hmm. is whose needs are you going to meet by going to those festivals of course not every festival is going to take you so you have a lot of no's that you have to deal with mm -hmm. but you try to have a mix of a-list film festivals then smaller specialized film festivals whether it be in our case music fests mm -hmm. documentary fests uh, indigenous fests or in this case a diversity focused festival yeah. uh, because that was one of the core elements of uh, of our entire ethos was mm -hmm. that we have a story about a minority group both in the US and in Canada right you're mm -hmm. talking about about 1.5 million indigenous people in Canada for a population of three, uh, 33 million mm -hmm. in the United States you're talking about a way small proportion because of everything that happened in the US so you're yes. talking about what maybe 3 million at the most for a population of 300 and something million. Mm -hmm. But those people are now very connected. We have a wonderful thing called the internet. And the yes, internet yay. enables a lot of bad things to happen and yes. a lot of good things good to happen. Things, yeah. And one of the things that happened in the indigenous community is that they got wired, they got connected. Mm -hmm. They connected with each other. And all of a sudden it's not a small band or tribe in this specific mm -hmm. part of the US or Canada arguing for something, it's Standing Rock. And they don't need mainstream media to come and report on it. They have their own networks and the message got across. It's yeah. probably one of the very first cases of uh, main, main news, news that we should be seeing on mainstream TV that we yes. didn't, but that we still learned about, that the whole world learned mm -hmm. about. And that is a direct result of that interconnectivity that we've uh, we've developed. Yeah, developed, accomplished, yeah. maybe. I don't know where the, that we're done yet, but We're yeah. not done, no. Good, <laughs> good. So this is a documentary, mm -hmm. so it's a journey. And the cool oh. thing about a documentary oh, is that you go in and you don't know where it's going to go and you don't really have control over what's going to happen. So I think one of the things, and obviously we're, our organization is Tribe of Women, but you have come to the tribe table very bravely. Thank you. Yeah, thank Some you. people uh, you know, shy away, but we're all about building cultures of women, supporting women, mm -hmm. but also more good men because that is, you know, we're Tribe of Human ultimately. So mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about that journey. Tell us a little bit about if you had probably a few lessons that you could share that you learned on that journey, because that's what I find fascinating about documentary films is that you all get to learn and be immersed in and grow with the people that you're surrounding with yourself yeah. with. Well, so both me and my co-director are, uh, he's American, but he's not, uh, 
a white American. Right. Neither am I a white Canadian. So that helped us mm -hmm. uh, insert ourselves into the indigenous community. We're not coming from this place that immediately would be associated with the colonizer movement. Right. Uh, there's some resistance in indigenous groups because of, mm -hmm. uh, of all that tension. So we had a, a little bit of a, uh, an easier way in, but we were following a completely different film. Uh, our film was a film about uh, youth engagement in the Northwest Territories of Canada, so all the way up north. Wow. And uh, that was what we filmed for about a year. And then at, at the one-year mark, as the, f the, the, the event that we were following wrapped up, mm -hmm. uh, we knew from the beginning that that was not the whole of our story. We just mm -hmm. did not know exactly what it was. Right. We allowed ourselves one year to figure out where the story would go. And we thought that was the last, the last shoot that we had, so we shot the final event, flew to a small town called Inuvik in, uh, right on the Arctic Ocean, where we were going to debrief for a week and just rest. Mm -hmm. And that same week, the reports, the final reports of the Canadian Truth and Reconciliation Commission came out. Mm -hmm. uh, the commission was spearheaded by three justices, uh, one of them Justice uh, Maurice Sinclair, and they issued a skating report that deals with all the consequences of residential schools uh, in, in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, as you may or may not know, uh, this existed in the US and in Canada, but in Canada we had about 150,000 children forcibly removed from their homes and sent to, uh, to boarding schools. Mm -hmm. About, uh, officially, 3.2k 3. died in the school's care. Oh uh, the Justice Sinclair of the Commission estimates the number to be 10 times as high. Wow. Uh, and in the middle of that, there's also the survivors that suffered physical, mental, sexual abuse. Right? Mm -hmm. So this has had incredible consequences in the Absolutely. well-being of the indigenous Those community communities. across, well, an entire generation really, and this generation still. Mm -hmm. uh, but what's happening now with, with these reports is that society has been forced to deal with it. Yeah. This is now in front of everyone, and that week in particular, yeah. Things were very, uh, very raw. Everything was on the surface. There were a lot of crying going on, a lot of media attention on it. Uh, and uh, what, what happened that week was that we, as the reports came out, we came across a number of musicians uh, just walking in the street in various cities. And we had interesting conversations about all, all of them female musicians. Uh, one of them became our executive producer oh, that same okay. week. Uh, two other our country musicians that are pretty famous in the in the local community, mm -hmm. and those conversations were enough to uh, recenter what we needed to do. So we had to ask ourselves the question: All right, so we've done this film for a year now. Mm -hmm. We thought we were going to go right into the edit suite. Right. This is not the story, though. The story is that part that we have barely touched, and it just came out. And so we had to take a leap of faith that sometimes you have to do as a filmmaker and decided to go back to the drawing board and uh, we tried to f make the two stories fit for almost three years it actually ended up not fitting so we dropped Completely everything that we had done wow. uh, for about a year and uh, kind of restarted yeah. and the journey that we embarked on was a journey that we were not uh, prepared for in a way uh, we spent the next year following 40 different musicians all across North America. Wow. So if you've ever been on a one musician schedule, now try being on 40 musician schedule. Herding cats. It's yeah. like herding mm -hmm. cats. Uh, you know, people like Buffy St. Marie took us flying to five different places to finally have time to even meet her. Wow. Uh, our executive producer would very often say things like, oh, can you meet us in this place tomorrow at seven and then the same day she turns around and says actually i'm going to be in this completely different city come and meet me there right so these are some of the logistics of dealing with musicians but yeah. we did that we followed all these musicians for a year uh -huh. uh, and what a wonderful privilege it is because they're not just musicians they are ambassadors for their communities buffy st marie carries the weight of an entire civil right movement uh, of an entire generation. Susan Aguilkark, our executive producer, is the very first indigenous musician in Canada to appear on national TV. Wow. Uh, so she still carries that aura. She is, both of them are yeah. heroes for this new generation of musicians. Yeah. Uh, and then you have people like Tanya Tagak who are pounding the pavement and, and putting a message across about the things that are going on in the community right now. And yes. the key difference, uh, or the two key differences are that A, we are now primed. We've learned about this report. We've learned about, we're in 2018. We know 
what we what did wrong, guessing, yeah. right? So now how do we fix it? So mm -hmm. we cannot feign ignorance anymore. No. But the interesting thing is that from the other side, mm -hmm. musicians are no longer, musicians and community leaders are no longer willing to let you feign ignorance. Yeah. They are in your face and they are telling you what the issues are mm -hmm. over and over and over and over again. And they are doing it sometimes with kindness and sometimes mm -hmm. with very loudly with the loudness <laughs> that is required right yeah. and you are starting to see change yeah. you look at kids like the kids coming out of this uh, shootout in florida yes. and look at the sense of empowerment that they have the exactly. the clarity of thought that they have yes. the clarity of path that they have this is what's happening also in indigenous rights with women's rights with mm -hmm. Afro-American rights, with LGBT rights. This is happening all across North America and we might try to hold it back, but intersectionality has arrived yes. and people figured it out. So they're not just connecting online, they're connecting yeah. in person and pushing this agenda of diversity and equality and, and well-being. And it's really inspiring. I love it. And that's the journey that we embarked on. Oh my God. Sometimes I need to unplug. Sometimes I've got to reboot. Sometimes I just want to sleep. But I always want to connect with you. Get into Brew Moods, aromatherapy lotions powered by a mindfulness app.